Uh, let's go to Sarah Sanders now, Fox News contributor, as you know, former White House press secretary, as you're well aware. Uh, Sarah, I'm just reading Politico now, what went into this, uh, and a little bit of the background between Biden and Harris. And while they did get along through the, their son, uh, through Joe Biden's son, Bo, it looked like Kamala Harris in the beginning was getting annoyed that everyone kept saying that she would be a natural running mate for Joe Biden. She was looking at it as, why not me, which makes sense why she chose to attack Joe Biden in the first debate, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. And for one, I'm very glad that uh, he didn't pick uh, Peter to be on the ticket because I think it would have been a much stronger ticket than the one he has lined up. I think that Kamala Harris um, is, it's no surprise that she is Joe Biden's pick. She is a champion of the same far left agenda that Joe Biden has been touting over the last year. They both support higher taxes, a total government takeover of health care, liberal judges, open borders, and the list goes on. On. This ticket will further crush our economy at a time when we need to be rebuilding it. It's the last thing I think we need is these two taking over. I think that a Biden-Harris ticket would make a Hillary Clinton presidency look like a moderate presidency. They have both caved completely to the far left agenda, and I think that's why we're seeing him pick her and why we're seeing them come together on this ticket, and I think they would be a disaster for our country. So um, there are some progressives that, that say she's not, she's not left enough. You know, she has a, a background in law enforcement as uh, the prosecutor in California. She was the former attorney general of California. So what does that say about the party? That, that their opinion uh, will change drastically. They will come around because, like I said, Kamala Harris and Joe Biden have both completely caved and adopted the far left agenda of their party. They have totally been controlled by both supporting the Green New Deal and a number of other policies that would be absolutely crushing to our economy. And it's not just about the economy. Our entire freedom and way of life in our country is at stake. It's never been more important for people to come out and to vote and to really look at the difference of the two candidates' policies. And I can't imagine that anybody in this country, when they really look at it, wants to live under a Biden-Harris presidency. I think that what they would do, not just, again, to the economy, but our entire way of life would be devastating to our country and another reason that people need to get out and make sure Donald Trump gets reelected. You know, Sarah, uh, over the last uh, number of hours, uh, ever since she was named, people have started learning about her past. I think, given the fact that the number one issue in the United States right now is the coronavirus, I, I think I, a lot of people would like to hear how Joe Biden and Kamala Harris would have a different response than what the Trump administration and the federal government has already done, which is all hands on deck. I want to know how they would do it differently than what we're seeing right now. Well, I think for starters, they would do a much greater government takeover. They would be uh, pushing far more federal reaching uh, destruction, I think, on individual communities. One of the things that President Trump has done extremely well is allowed states and local communities to make decisions that are best for those communities while providing resources to help across the board. They have unleashed, I think, a lot of the greatness of America in allowing us to put on fast track uh, production of ventilators and other PPE gear that was desperately needed on the front end. I think it showed why Donald Trump has been right all along that we have to bring manufacturing back to this country. We have to remain tough on China. Right. I don't think that the China travel ban is something that we could have ever imagined under a Biden-Harris presidency. In fact, they condemned the president for it. I think this virus would have been far worse uh, than it is right now if the president hadn't taken decisive action at the beginning and putting those travel restrictions in place that those two criticized him for doing. Um, I think we would have been in a much more mm -hmm. difficult position on the front end if we hadn't had those actions. Um, and certainly, I think the president has done a good job and needs to continue to do all that we can to fight against the coronavirus. But at the same time, while we focus on saving lives, we have to continue looking at how we save livelihoods. I think the economy would be under complete collapse under a Biden-Harris presidency. At no time is it going to be more important to have somebody who knows how to build the economy than right. it is after we come through this pandemic. 
President Trump has shown he can do that. Biden and Harris policies have Joe, shown they would further take us down Joe instead Biden, of build us up. Joe Biden doesn't uh, uh, emo, like, get the emotion from the Republicans like Barack Obama, who has made it clear he is going to be active. Kamala Harris clearly will, uh, and her policies will clearly get uh, Republicans motivated, and Donald Trump does by trade. Also what stands out, and it seems like a lifetime ago, was Justice Kavanaugh's confirmation hearings, where Kamala Harris was extremely aggressive and condescending uh, and disbelieving of him. In fact, there are some moments to relive uh, for that. Uh, so let's take a listen. Have you had any discussion with anyone ever about Bob Mueller? Well, have I ever had a discussion about Bob Mueller? I used to work in the administration with Bob Mueller. And did you talk with anyone at Kasowitz, Benson, and Torres? You, you asked me that. I need to know who works there. I think you can answer the question without me giving you a list of all employees of that law firm. Well, actually, I can't. I, Why not? Because I don't know who works there. Fine. So... It was uh, she was relentless going after him. That's the type of thing that re that motivates the right. Uh, look, Kamala Harris was mean and she was cruel to a good and decent person. For a lot of us, the Kavanaugh hearings may seem like a lifetime ago. I'm pretty sure for Brett Kavanaugh, it certainly doesn't feel like a lifetime ago. I bet it feels like yesterday. I think she owes him an apology for the way that she treated him. She was the leader of the liberal mob who came after a good and decent person and tried to destroy him based off of uh, malicious lies. I think she should do the right thing and apologize to Brett Kavanaugh and to his family. Sarah, thanks so much for joining us.